I'm giving you the second part of the Jujion USB microscope video. So in the last video, I went through some sort of the physical body of the microscope, and now we're going to actually look at some insects. So like I said, one of the downsides of this microscope is that it has this really strangely reflective sort of coating on the stage. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to put a little strip of white paper there just to cover that up. So you can see that makes a remarkable difference. And now we're going to load an insect on here and I'm going to keep with the same insects that I used in my last video, sort of starting with this beetle, Cerambicid, I think. Get that on there. Yeah, good enough. So we're going to bring this into focus. Raising the microscope right now. And this is using the software that does come with this microscope. It's called Exploview or something like that. And you can actually rotate this so that you can view the insect in the actual orientation that you want. So, like I said, you know, sort of zooming in on this, I can also raise the color a bit, make it a little bit brighter. And certainly I can bring the microscope down further if there's something I want to zoom in on. And then I'm using the fine focus here. So this is raising and lowering, sort of using the coarse focus to raise and low, lower the head on the microscope. And now I'm using the fine focus sort of down here. Um, so what I've noticed with many of these microscope models is that they tend to have this plastic ring to keep you from accidentally bumping up against the lights or the lens itself. Unfortunately, that plastic ring might get in the way or sort of interact with whatever you're holding your insect to. So in this case, I have a bit of clay uh, that's sticking to the stage in the paper, and it's very easy for that clay to sort of run into uh, the actual plastic ring. So you have to be careful about that. But let's see if I can get as close as I can to this thing. And you see right there, I'm bumping into the clay, so I'm gonna have to manipulate this a little bit. And now I'm running into the actual pin itself. Okay, that's probably as close I can get for now without some serious playing around or sort of moving where this insect is on the pin. And we can sort of bring it into focus. And yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I would say that for the price, again, this is less expensive than the Celestron. Um, and it gets you some pretty good images. So much like with sort of the other microscopes out there, it does have some photo taking capabilities, but at the same time, this is still recognized as a camera by my computer. I can use it as the camera that I'm using in Zoom. I can do a quick time uh, sort of screen share. It's totally going to recognize it. And I think this is going to be perfectly usable for students to identify to family. You can certainly position this thing so that you can do important stuff like count the number of tarsi. Um, it might not have the same image quality as the Celestron, but again, for the price, I think this is going to be much more friendly to students. So let's go with a smaller insect. So again, we're going to go with that sort of uh, shiny dark black wasp probably around three to four millimeters. So like I said, when you have something that's sort of dark and shiny like this, this is going to be very challenging to take a good photo or video of, even with a regular microscope. So let's bring this down even further. Actually, let's see if I can get it to be, there we go. So I'm going to bring this down even further. You can see it's getting brighter. Let's do some focusing. And again, this might be the sort of insect where you would be benefited by actually having a, um, a diffuser to actually uh, diffuse some of that light because it is a very, very shiny dark insect. Oh, and I didn't show you, this is actually how you take photos, like that. You can also take videos. But again, I don't know if you're actually going to use this unless you're putting these images into a slideshow or something like that. I'm probably just going to open up this microscope 
as a camera in Zoom for the live sessions that I'm doing. All right, so let's go with an even smaller insect. This wasp is probably only, let's see if I could find the wasp I was using. Ah, here we go. So this is probably closer to two millimeters, this insect right here. Oops. So <laughs> I, you know, inevitably you're going to do this. I accidentally knocked this off of the mount. So I'm going to have to repoint mount this. So this is something you should be aware of. And again, this is largely because you do have that little plastic ring around the microscope. So something to be aware of, something to warn your students. You have to be aware of that plastic ring and make sure that you don't accidentally knock your insects off of your point mount. But let's see, while we have this here, if we can get this into somewhat better focus, get this a little bit closer to the screen. So we could focus this a little bit more. I'm all the way at the bottom right now. I can't get any closer. And for an insect that's only maybe two millimeters, maybe two and a half millimeters, this is pretty good. So maybe you have some students that want to do some identification before they point mount something. Uh, this would probably be good for that. So fortunately, I'm going to have to fix this poor insect later. Let's put this aside. Let's go ahead and go with our big insect. So now I'm going to bring out the robber fly again. Now, the unfortunate thing about this microscope is that it's not as easy to sort of take out of its stand as the Celestron was. So I'm not going to do that, um, but I will show you sort of the highest view you can get and how much of the entire body of this robber fly, which is probably around two and a half centimeters, you can sort of get into view. So that is about the entirety of the insect that I can actually view. Here I am playing with the focus and I'm at the very top of that stage. You can sort of wind up and down. So now we're going to zoom in on this. I'm bringing the head and the stage down closer. It's obviously getting brighter. You do want to adjust for your light. Go on to focus. And I'm continuously impressed by how good these tiny little, you know, sort of USB microscopes are at sort of getting high levels of detail in a rather large insect. So it's a little bit too bright here. I'm going to knock down the color some. Certainly you could do any amount of post-processing that you want to. Let's try to get it a little bit closer. Again, I'm starting to run into the clay where my insect is actually mounted. If I had longer pins, I could probably, you know, not worry about that. But again, that plastic ring is still going to interact with the uh, pin that your insect is in. So I'm getting some pretty good detail there. And I can even, you know, show you some of the photos that I have taken before. This will just open up preview when you click on that. Very slowly, yeah. So some of the photos that I've taken, they're decent. Probably good enough to sort of identify um, insects to family for students, which is basically the goal here. So that's it for me. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording.